Alright everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. This is our WWE show for the week. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Mosh. Thanks, Thrasher. Gary Rhodes, everybody. And getting right into it, they started off the show with an awesome tribute video for uh, Paul Bear. I, I thought it was very well done. Um, it almost looked to me, and I said this when they put it out online, like his Hall of Fame video. It did. You know, and it, you really kind of forget nowadays how big of a part of the whole history of the last 20 years Paul Bear has been, of not just for The Undertaker, but for the WWE. Yeah, Kane, Mankind, Big Fan of Vader. I mean, he's not just been Undertaker's manager, although I don't think Taker would have got as big without Paul, and I don't think Paul would have got as big without Taker. Well, they, they complemented each other's style so well. I remember uh, I saw an interview with, with uh, Paul when uh, he got the job the main reason he got the job is because he was a mortician. Yep. And Rick Rudin. Yeah, Rick brought him up there. And uh, coming off of that, we had Undertaker came to the ring, did his, I would say, a little tribute, did the thing, kneeled down and put his hand out like he used to do for Paul. And he got cut off by CM Punk, who cut a promo, and it's been getting mixed reviews. A lot of people said, think he went too far. Some people didn't. I'm along the mindset of he didn't go too far, to be honest with you. This is pro wrestling, and I, Percy, Paul, whatever you want to call him, he would have been down for this from day one. That, that man's life revolved around wrestling in his family. Well, if you think about it, he's let him kill him on TV, what, three, four times? Exactly. He, the last time, one of the, he got frozen the last time. Yeah, they put him in the, locked him in the freezer. Uh, Taker did the concrete with the, against the, concrete, the Dudleys. Yep. I mean, really, I mean, Paul, you know, that's the best part about Paul Bear is he's always been about wrestling. Yeah. And, and he came out, he did a little thing. It added a personal effect to their match that's going to happen at WrestleMania. It was already a match I was looking forward to, probably most on the card. Oh, yeah. Now, even more so. It's probably going to go from a match, the most, the most anticipated match on WrestleMania this year for me to the most anticipated match at WrestleMania for the last probably five years for me now. I agree with you. This match here will blow, I guarantee it's going to blow Cena Rock 2, Cena Rock 1 out of the water. I mean, it's just, I mean, Punk's that good of a worker, and Taker always brings the A game at WrestleMania. It almost begs to close the show at this point now. You would think, but you got the Cena and the Rock, you got the, the pet peeves. Then we had, um, during the break that happened on WWE Active, which I absolutely hate because I refuse to go on to WWE Active while commercials are on because that's the time to go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever. Anyhow, I digress. I agree with you. Kane came out and attacked Punk because Punk interrupted his father's um, tribute, which he really didn't interview. The The best part, and I forgot, we forgot to talk about it, was when he said that the best part of Paul Bearer passing away is he won't, he will remember you as being perfect. He won't know that you lost to me. You'll be 20 and in one. And, and when he start, he started it off with the. Uh, I, I want to mourn the memory of the streak. <laughs> right there, CM Punk has became my favorite heel of all time. Right there, I'm sorry, you know. He's he's a guy, that is willing to go out and get the Jerry Lawler. Heel. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, look up some old school Jerry Lawler Memphis wrestling. And this is the kind of thing that Jerry would do all the time, and he got over. Well, look what Jerry did with Jake the Snake in 96. Yeah, when he poured the whiskey down. He gave him a giant not a bottle of whiskey, you know. I mean, that this is pro wrestling, people. And this is the Attitude Era, hopefully, it, it, you know, kicking in. More of an Attitude Well, more of an Attitude. I, you know, I'd love to see the Attitude Era back, but, you know. I don't think we'll ever get full Attitude no. Era, but we will get some of it. Now, next, uh, after that, we had... That's set up for a match later between Punk and Kane to close the show. Um, we had the Big Show versus Seth Rollins it to be the Shield's first singles match, which it didn't last long before the rest of the members of the Shield got involved. I liked that when when Show had them isolated, he dominated, but whenever they were able to gang up on him, they took him down just like anybody else. Well, that's what I'm, I was happy about with this. It wasn't the Nexus. You know, when you know when Nexus come out, shows on like show or Cena would destroy it, ten of them. Yeah. These three men dominated the big show when they got their cards together. Yep. 
and I like the triple power bomb. I mean, you could tell Show was helping him because he was but, breathing. Yeah. But who cares? He did look good. It, it was an awesome segment. It was a good visual, and it adds. Looks like the match for WrestleMania will be Show and Orton and Sheamus versus the Shield, which I hope the Shield wins because I'd like to see him stretch this domination out as long as they can. I mean, eventually they're going to have to lose. I hope not at Mania, though. No, I hope not. I hope it goes on a little further, at least to SummerSlam. Now, coming off of that, we had what I would think, probably, if it's not the match of the night, the main event is the only one better. Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler. Excellent match. And the, the thing of it is that I really enjoyed the match, but this match, I mean, this is a WrestleMania match that they could put on early on the show, give them 20, 25 minutes, and they would steal the show. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, that's what WWE's problem is, is they're giving away good matches on television. They're, they're pulling a WCW. Well, yeah, that and the thing of it is, I could see WrestleMania 30, 1, 2, 3, whatever, um, Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler as the main event. Easily. Oh, definitely. And it was a really good match. Um, I really liked it. I liked how it ended up. I liked everything about it was pretty good, in my opinion. I'm a Bryan fan, but I'm glad Ziggler finally got over on somebody lately because, I mean, honestly, he's the Money the Bank guy. He's been in some rotation order. Exactly. Right now, the last, what, two, three weeks, I think that's all he's been doing is jobbing. Well, even more than that, probably. Well, I mean, his last, the last pay-per-view of the, le- of the year, he beat John Cena. Yep. And now look at him. Then we had, after that, um, we had Tensai versus Fandango. You're saying it wrong, I'm not wrestling. Fandango. Fandango. I understand that they're doing him not debuting to get him heat. But he's getting the wrong kind of heat. He's getting the I don't give a shit heat. Not the mm-hmm. we hate you heat. Like CM Punk got earlier. Exactly. And, and it was just a, and it was an annoying little segment. The one thing that I could take out positive of it is they they showcased Naomi a little bit, who's the better wrestler of the Funkadactyls. And also Tensai getting the um, the Albert style pants. Exactly. I, I, I like the fact they, were, they looked like each other before. But Tensai looks better in the pants. Well, it, it just, it's more a beckon back to his old gimmick. Exactly. I, I think they're slowly bringing that back. Speaking of old gimmicks, oh, oh you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. But I, I kind of like the Rhodes Scholars version too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were misinformed? <laughs> your posterior <laughs> made <or> me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Road Scholar, I mean, it was, it was funny stuff. They, it was the Road Scholars versus the New Age Outlaws. And um, the match didn't go too long before Brock Lesnar came out and attacked the Outlaws. Reason being that they're friends with Triple H. And he came out and he said, Triple H, the only way I'm going to give you the match is if I get to pick the stipulation and you don't get to know before you. Well, the thing he did, well, Paul said it. Paul cut a nasty little promo on, I mean, it was, it was a decent promo. Yeah. And that's what Paul Heyman's there for. You know, Punk didn't need it. Brock does need it. And these two work so great together. It's kind of like when we're talking about Paul Bear and a Taker. Yeah. I don't think Brock would have got as big without uh, Heyman. Paul Heyman. No. But Paul would have. Paul Heyman would have got big no matter who they oh, oh, yeah. But I'm just saying the, yeah. the, the push. It was, it was a good, it was a fitting thing, and we finally got... It official for a match at Wrestle. Well, it's not all the way official, but as official as it's going to be. Because, you know, Triple H will accept. And I bet you it's going to be some kind of UFC-style ruling. Something something different. I don't want to see a regular match. Something for... I, I stand by what I said last week with I'd like to see them in a last man standing match. I, th- I think that would be the, the perfect match for them, too. Hunter runs those matches. Hunter... Hunter that's Hunter's hell in the cell. To the Undertaker, you know that's what people think of when you think of a Last Man Standing. You think of of Hunter Hearst Humphrey, Triple H. What? You better know, you better call somebody. The next match you know, serves our, our boy Mark Henry versus Kofi Kingston. The new jobber is your for the faces. And and it's funny that you know the the show. I was I was reminiscing back when I was writing out our listing of the matches, and um. There's a lot of squash matches on this show. This wasn't as bad as he's been getting 
the squashes he's been getting though. He, he has some good moves in on this. Right. But why would uh why would Kofi ever go for the the high cross body on him? I mean, you know it's that's setting up for the world's strongest slam, but he does it to everybody that ever does it. It's mm -hmm. I mean for someone I, I don't know. Pep peeve when they when they go too far out of logic it bothers me a little bit. Yeah, but Henry still looked like the monster. And they're yeah. building up, building up a, a, a thing between him and Ryback, which we'll get into later on. Yes. Now, before we go on with the show, we're gonna we're gonna break a little bit and go into our question of the week. Now, last week, just before we shot the show, we got news of Paul Bearer dying, and the question of the week was, "What was your favorite Paul Bearer Percy Pringle moment?" Now, we got some answers from our friends that we're gonna say before we go into ours. The first is from our friend Joshua Adams, ten forty four. At WrestleMania 20, when he came out, it was such a surprise. That was a, if it, for everybody yeah. doesn't remember, that's when Taker came back as a dead man after being Biker Taker for a couple of years. Um, our friend Paul over at the Deadly Sins. My favorite Paul Bear moment bit would be, would have to be when he in, had his original falling out with Taker and he introduced Kane. And then, um, IWX show, which is a show that I don't know which one gave it to us, but it's uh, our good friend, the mass tweeter. He started up with a with another guy named Professor Big Daddy, and then they posted from their show. So I don't know if it was Tweeter or Professor Big Daddy, but one of them put this. Me, I met Mr. Pringle in '91 after a show in Maryland. He was very kind and grounded. We talked a little football, and he convinced Taker to sign my tickets, though. Cool moment. Best facial expressions in the biz. He was a king at knowing how to draw heat. Rest at last, Percy. So a little bit of a, got a little bit of a personal moment mm -hmm. there, which is very cool. Um, what was your favorite Paul moment, Paul Bear or Percy Pringle moment? Uh, I like the Paul Bear moment when uh, they were building up for the casket match against Yokozuna. When they, they kept cutting, the, there's a couple different promos they did building up to uh, Royal Rumble. I thought they were excellent, and I thought he he sold the whole show. Taker hardly spoke a word. It was only rest in peace, as far as I can remember. It's been so long ago. That that was good. Um, my favorite would be the the boiler room match when he turns on Undertaker to manage mankind and brings man basically brings mankind into the fold and uh, really puts him. Puts Mick Foley over at a level that he hadn't been at that point in WWE. Oh, no. and it helped. It helped Foley's career. It helped Taker's career to, to get away from Paul for a little bit. It, it helped everybody involved. It helped Paul disassociate with with Taker, which eventually brought him in Kane. It helped Foley get bigger than he was, and it helped Taker show that he doesn't need Paul Bear. But I, I really enjoyed that. That was a match I really enjoyed. Mick Foley's one of my favorites, so, I mean, it's an easy choice for me. And uh, thank you very much for you guys' opinion. We like talking about it. It was a good subject for us. Um, the next question, the question for this week, with the New Age Outlaws being on TV the last two weeks, would you guys like to see the New Age Outlaws in an extended run? Maybe six months, a year, whatever it may be. Not even as title, as champions, just on the show more regularly. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on our Facebook. Hit us up on our Twitter. Put it down where? Down there. Right down there in the comments, folks. And we'll tell you what we think about that next week. Now, coming from that, we had a backstage segment with the, the Outlaws' as opponents, the, the Road Scholars, and Cody was talking to Caitlin, and Damian Sandow came in, and uh, brought the Bella Twins back as a surprise return. And that was their dates for the night. I enjoy it. I think the Bellas are going to bring a lot more to the, the women's division that needs to be in the women's division right now because it is very, la it's lagging. Well, you say, know, to say the least. You know what I enjoyed and the reason, we don't do, a, we don't review a lot of the backstage segments, but it start, I think it's starting to show the rift more between Sandow and um, Rhodes. On SmackDown, when he, he didn't say, he said something, I forget what he said about Caitlyn, but he wasn't, that she's doing the best she can with what genetics gave her. Yeah. And now he's trying to, you know, he's kind of, you can see where Cody wanted to go with Caitlyn, and you can see where Sandow's trying to pull him from it. 
I think eventually the, the full break is going to come and they're going to feud with each other and Caitlyn's going to be the catalyst. I agree. I think it's going to be kind of like, remember when uh, Jericho and Christian split? Over Trish. Over Trish, yeah. yeah. And then uh, after that segment, we had Ryback versus Heath Slater. Squash match. Uh, 3MB comes in. They get squashed. Mark Henry comes down. They squash. And it's it, it's reported, um, who was it? Um, McIntyre took four finishers. He took two shell yeah. shocks and two World Strongest Slams that he had to be helped to the back after during commercial. And I don't, I don't know if it was to sell that they destroyed him or he legitimately got injured. I hope it's not that he got legitimately injured because if it did, it's a silly way to get him injured. Indeed. And the thing that pisses me off about this thing here... Is that Funaki? <laughs> the thing that pisses me off about this thing here is instead of building this up for Mania, they're having their first match against each other at SmackDown this week. Really? I mean, this is this could be a Mania match. This would be the Mania match that Ryback needs to solidify himself as a main eventer. Exactly. It won't hurt I, Henry to lose to him. That's all you know. I don't think, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe this, something will happen. Maybe before it happens, a shield will attack one or the other, and we don't get it. Now, the next, uh, this you were talking about stuff that disappoints you. The next match disappointed me. Alberto Del Rio versus Antonio Cesaro. Not that it was a bad match. It was a very enjoyable match. But yet again, Antonio Cesaro is booked on TV losing. And uh, they're making their United States champion look so weak at this point that, well, who cares about the belt at this point? Didn't he lose to Sin Cara at main event this week? Yeah, I mean, he's lost. The guy's a jobber. He's jobbing to people, and he's, he's probably the third or fourth high... If you go by championship, he's the third or fourth highest ranking guy on the roster because you got the two, the WWE title, the world title, the Intercontinental, and the U.S. title. Those should be the four main guys, period. Mm -hmm. And I understand that he should be. Yes, he should lose to Del Rio. Del Rio is higher in the pecking order. Don't get me wrong. Shouldn't it's the part. amount of losses that he's taken that's bothering me. Exactly. And he's a guy that I think they could build the future around. This guy could be a WWE champion. He's got every gift needed to be the WWE champion. He cuts great promos. He's excellent in the ring. He's a strong son of a bitch. And the guy can wrestle. I mean, he's old school. I, I, I really enjoy his matches. Exactly. Now, coming up after that, we have another old school wrestler. Kane did his promo in the back where he didn't say nothing. And again, we don't normally cover promos, but... The significance is that he's holding the urn, mm -hmm. which would come into play later, which is why we're reviewing it here. I thought it was excellent, him not saying nothing, and not even being able to see his facial expressions, just his mannerisms told the story. And, and Kane is a guy that is so underrated in the history of time, he's always looked at as a second banana to The Undertaker, but he, I think, he's just as good as Undertaker's ever been, and... He's a guy I really enjoy. Kane. I, I'm going to be very sad when Kane actually hangs up, to, hangs the tights up for good. Oh, me too. I mean, Kane is probably the best big man, one of the best big men in the business today. He's your brother. Oh, yeah. Well, we we're talking about the Road Scholars earlier. They yeah. pulled double duty last night. They ended up having a second match against Orton and Sheamus. Sheamus. I, I didn't. I didn't like it. I, no. Probably my least favorite match of the night. Um, it wasn't nothing that impressed me in the match at all. I, I don't. I'm nothing against anybody involved. Uh, they could have. I think they could have easily put the prime time players or the Usos or even the clones in here. But why would you need to use a road scholar so much on one show? And it's just a little bit of a gripe to me. I, I, I totally agree with you. I like the road scholars. I do too. They don't need to lose all the time. They didn't need to lose to Sheamus and Orton. You're, you're talking about an established tag team losing the two single baby faces. I don't like it. Sorry. Speaking of something I didn't like, the uh, we had Y2J doing the, the Monday night, or the highlight reel. The highlight reel. When he brought out The Miz. And it was rather boring, to be honest with you, until Wade Barrett came out and it turned into, it just turned into a giant WWE movie commercial, which... Yeah. 
they, they played so many movie commercials, not including the actual commercials, that it started to get, at this point in the night, it got so redundant that it was like, all right, we seen G.I. Joe, we seen the Mrs. movie, The Call, or The Marine, we seen The Call, we seen Barrett's movie. I mean, enough already. We know where your movies are. Show us once during the night. You don't have to keep bringing them up and up. Definitely. But it did lead to a Miz, a match between Miz and Y2J for the number one contender for the Intercontinental title for next week. Which it was an okay match. They ended up in a in a disqualification because Barrett got involved, which is going to lead to a three-way next week, which they should have just did from the beginning. Exactly. Uh, I've seen Y2J have better matches. I'm not a big fan of the Miz. I mean, it this. His face turn is among the worst face turns I've ever seen in my entire life. What face turn do you think was almost as bad as this? I don't even remember one being this bad. I don't. You know, that's the thing. I've Maybe seen, Disco yeah. Inferno just because nobody cared. And that's about it. They're, they got a guy with the quality of Disco Inferno, but they're trying to make him a main event. I like him doing the commentary, though, on uh, main event. Miz wasn't bad when he was with uh, Michael Cole. Mm -mm. Wasn't bad, just he was pushed further than he should have been on the card. And I really enjoyed when Miz and Morrison were a team. Oh, yeah. I always thought Miz would be the Jadetti and Morrison would be the HBK. There you go. Now, coming out of that, we had a, a former Miz associate, Jack Swagger. Well, before that, we had the promo. Yeah. The comedy promo. With a Del Rio and Rodrigo. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I'm sorry. I, I, I did I thought it was funny. I want to get pizza. Pizza. We the pizza. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I, I really I enjoy them two working together. They that is probably one of the best face turns in a long time. Oh yes. Definitely. It was as good of a face turn as probably I would say it it reminds me of the Macho Man face turn when he took Miss Elizabeth back. Mm -hmm. And that's kinda what it was on the pages too to me. Oh good. Anyway, sorry to interrupt, but I just had to say it before and, you the match. And Swagger and Coulter, they do their promo beforehand, do basically say the same things they've been saying for the past few weeks. Swagger versus Sin Cara. I thought it was a really good match. Mm -hmm. I thought Sin Cara held his end of the bargain up well. He put Swagger over. I thought it was decent. It was a nice lead into the main event. You know what this match reminded me of is when... Uh like Rey Mysterio would go against the main eventer back in the WCW yeah. days. They give him a few, give him a few spots, and then the the, the main eventer would get over. And that's that's how this one was, and that's how it should be for Sin Cara. I think they gave that guy way too much from the get go. Too early. Exactly, and that's what happens. Now coming off of that, we had the main event, a no disqualification match, CM Punk versus Kane. Great match. I loved every second of it. I liked, I loved the finish. I love that he had he had Kane up for the go to sleep and the gong hits, gets distracted, Kane gets the gets the win with the choke slam. I like that as Kane is celebrating, to, he goes and gets the urn and hits him in the back of the head with it, and then proceeds to beat him with it. And then when Taker comes to the ring, he runs out and leaves with the urn. And then mocks him with the with the urn. Mocks him, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was a really good really good ending. Again, pushing putting a more personal aspect into their feud and leading into their match. Oh, definitely. Punk reminds me of Jake Roberts, in a way, with this, with the, with the way this angle's going right now. Yeah. I thought it was an excellent main event. Um, I thought all, the, all in all, the show was a million times better than last week. Oh, God, yes. But before we, we're going to go into our ratings. Now, we got a rating scale of 1 to 5. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. A 5 would be a CM Punk. A four would be a Daniel Bryan, a three is a Sheamus, a two is a Big Show, a one is a John Cena. What would you give the show, Gary? I'm giving it a five, a CM Punk. For one reason, the quality was so much better this week than last week. It, I was interested the whole time. I wasn't trying to hit the fast forward button through it. And I did, you know, for sentimental reasons with Paul Bear, and I liked how they had different scenes throughout the show. I'm giving it to Daniel Bryan, and I'm, I'm giving it a four out of five. Um, there were a couple of hiccups in the show. The Ms. Barrett section and Ms. Barrett match. Um, that that was a hiccup to me that I could have could have did without. The way they had Ryback and Henry destroying J or, um, McIntyre over and over, I could have lived without. So there were a couple of the Fandango 
thing I could have lived without. But that's that's it. I mean, really, it's nitpicking. It's just a little little bit that's going to drag it from a five to a four, in my opinion. But basically, that's all I got to say about the show. Is there anything you wanted to add? That's it. Well, my name is George Coles, Gary Rose, and this has been Heel Heat.